Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, I am Shailaja Suresh, a senior solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. And I am here with you today to give a glimpse of what Andon is and how AWS overcomes the challenges in a traditional Andon system. That said, let's begin with a why. Now, the origin of the word Andon in Japanese comes from the use of lighting equipment, as many of you might already know that. Now, from the context of lean manufacturing, a traditional Andon system is where the operators pull a cord or press a button when a defect is suspected in a production line to prevent the defect from propagating further down the production line. Now, this action actually causes stack lights to light up, as shown in this picture. So, if the line is stopped, the red light it is lit. Now, let's make this a, a little more interesting. So I'm going to introduce some history here. So this process originates back to the original Toyota system corporation, pioneered by the Toyota founder, Sakichi Toyoda, father of Japanese Industrial Revolution. Now, I should also tell you why I chose to present on this topic. I am someone who has seen the traditional and on in action on factory floors close to one and a half decades back. And I feel so excited when I see how much of transformation has happened and on over the years. Okay, so that's it, let's dive right in. So why is and on even needed? Now, it may have been already obvious at this point, but let's call out why we actually need and on systems. And a good way to relate to this is that it helps with the three constraints of a process, which is cost, quality, and time. So number one, it helps reduce downtime of the production process, as we have seen. Number two is that it helps bring down the defects in the product by preventing defects from propagating or going down further in an assembly line. The third point is that since the above two are actually baked into the process, it apparently reduces cost and waste in the production system. That said, let's take a quick look at how a traditional and on system operates. Now imagine an assembly line and an associate on the factory floor notices a problem with the assembly. Clearly, the associate cannot let the defective assembly go down the line. The factory is huge, and there needs to be an alert on the floor to alert the floor manager to decide who could fix this issue. So what does the associate do? The associate pulls the and on cord, which lights up the stack lights at his workstation. Floor manager then comes to the station, figures out the right specialist who could solve the issue, and calls for the specialist. All right. So you may have guessed it already. Yes, I'm going to talk about the challenges in the system. And just as any traditional system, this is highly manual. And I should say that I've had opportunities in the past where I interviewed such associates who were using such a system. And by the way, this type of setup can be really stressful for operators and has a wide range of process inefficiencies. Let's call out a few of them. Number one is that you have delays in acting upon the issue. There is a lot of back and forth. There is no proper escalation mechanism to get the right key personnel to act on the issue. Plus, there could also be cases of lack of ownership in fixing the issue. And then there is also this issue of unclear problem indication because of problems being summarized by just a few buttons only, right? For example, a red button can mean five different things, or a red light can mean five different things. And then there is no seamless integration with data systems. That's because most of these issues are tracked through pen and paper. They are so manual. And sometimes the operators even fail to note them down over pen and paper that it may not even get to any of the data system or computer systems. So nobody knows if the issue happened at all. As a result of that, you have a lack of historical records to take any kind of actionable insights to determine the root causes. As a result, you have the alarm fatigue. Employees get used to alarms, and you could, you could actually stop noticing these signals after some point of time. And remember that there are also chances that the alarms and signals may not even be heard in all locations of the factory floor. 
And apparently such a system is very difficult to deploy in scale. So yeah, so all right, we, we spoke enough about the challenges now. And let's see what Amazon Virtual Anton would actually bring to the table. The first difference is that both the associate as well as the machine do the alerting. So it's not just the associate alone. And then the alerting inter interface is actually on a tablet or a smartphone, which has multiple options. And it's not just one single button in terms of tracking the issue. And such options actually help in routing the issue to the right engineer automatically without another layer of manual intervention to the factory manager. Overall, the average first response time is shrunk. And we'll walk through a very convincing use case shortly to see how that happens. All right, changing gears a bit, what's the big picture? So since there is overall time reduction to act, we are moving beyond pen and paper. And we have the option now to collect this data for insights. And then once we have actionable data, and this is like stating the obvious, you know this, it becomes much easier to find, eliminate the time and cost max. It helps to improve the overall equipment effectiveness of the factory floor. Okay, now let's get into the 200 level discussion, into the technicalities. Now, this is a very high level architecture diagram illustrating the AWS services under the ABA architecture. And as many of you might be aware of at AWS, uh, we work backwards from our customers. So when we work with our manufacturing customers, one of the key inputs we received from the executor of manufacturing organizations was to make the cloud buy-in from the operations technology groups easy. And I'm sure many of you <laughs> might be able to appreciate the fact that how challenging it is to navigate the OTIT world in a manufacturing organization. So to tackle this challenge, we came up with a template on the AWS solutions page to spin up all the AWS services under the hood in your AWS account with just a few clicks. And the important message here is that the middle box where you see all those AWS services within the white rectangle, all those services are completely taken care of for you from an implementation standpoint, which actually, actually means that it simplifies the buying from the operations technology team of these manufacturing organizations. OK. So for us to actually understand this implementation, let's walk through an example. OK, so let's say that we have a scenario where we are required to implement the solution on a shop floor. So where do we begin? The very first step is to understand the Amazon Virtual Andron or AVA topology that needs to be set up. Something like what you see in this picture. So we get to have a chat with the OT team and get to segregate the elements under each of these headings. And what are these headings? These are nothing but what are the sites which need the system? What could be the specific areas in an assembly line or specific process probably? Or are there any uh, stations or devices that need to be registered and all that is noted down. So once that's noted down, now let's look at the steps in configuring the system, the ABA system on the shop floor. So the first step is again the obvious one, which is spinning up the cloud formation template in the AWS account. And by the way, this is available uh, in the URL that I just provided. Uh, that said, once that's successful, the next step is to find the people that are to be added to the system. And it's important that we find the right set of people that are for the right set of alerts. OK, let's, let's uh, remind ourselves now about the traditional add-on system. The traditional add-on system, all alerts go to one manager or probably to all personnel across the shop factory floor. So, so how do we solve that challenge here through the virtual add-on? So on the right hand side of this picture, you see that there is something called as the associate group who gets to see the client console. It's just not, it's nothing but a HTML page on an app uh, on a on a smartphone or a tablet where the group has options to alert in case of issues. And then you also get to see the engineer group who has access to another console called as the observer console which gives more details like where has the location occurred or which sites experienced the issue. 
And along with the observer console, remember that the engineer group also has access to the client console. For the manager, it's, it's higher level of abstraction. So the manager can actually get to see metrics and the history pages along with the client and observer consoles. You will have click through options when you configure the screen after you sign. In. So once you, oh, by the way, the, the AWS service is Amazon Cognito, which makes this configuration easy for you. OK, so moving on to the next step, which is registering the AVA topology. So remember, our step zero was to capture the AVA topology. And we are going to register that within the system that we just created through the CloudFormation template. So you get to register the sites, areas, process. And behind the scenes, what you're actually doing is that you're storing data on tables on a no uh, SQL database, which is called as Amazon DynamoDB. Uh, so just a few lines on what DynamoDB does. It's a fully managed multi-region no SQL database service with built-in security backup and restore controls so that it makes the setup and maintenance uh, of this database for the manufacturing customers. Now, once that's done, the next step would be to decide what would you want to do with the data. You have the data with you, and you might want to have, uh, uh, you might want to uh, choose one, one or more of these options. So one of the options is to just display and download the data from the observer console, which means that you just put it on Amazon Simple Storage Service, which is a highly durable object store for storing raw data. You also have the option to send notifications through SMS, which means you can send alerts through SMS or email to the factory personnel. You also have the option to do machine learning by connecting it to Amazon SageMaker to prepare, build, and train, and deploy high quality machine learning models with absolutely no machine learning expertise. And Sanjay touched upon this point a little while ago. So this, uh, using SageMaker can actually solve for use cases that involve anomalies for uh, preventive maintenance. And you also have the option to build dashboards using Amazon QuickSight for actionable insights and for executive visibility. All right. Now that we have configured all the steps that's, a, that's required, so let's walk through a case where a machine has detected a quality issue in the assembled product. Okay, so now it raises an alert. You see the uh, associate uh, getting the alert in the smartphone or uh, tablet in this case. And that console is the first response console. So you get to see the appropriate inputs. And in our case, it's assistance required. Let's enter. And then what happens? Now the engineer has the observer console. So the engineer acknowledges this alert, which has the station name, area, site, and other location details. And now let's take a minute to actually appreciate the transformation brought in here when compared to traditional analog. In a traditional system, the engineer who walks down the floor prioritizes the others. There is no stack ranking, as you see here, in terms of priorities. And the human in instinct, in general, is usually to pick, the, uh, pick up the issues that's easy to fix first, right? Which, which is probably eliminated here, because all the stack ranking and everything is done by the console, by the virtual analog system itself. As you get to see the timestamps, the resolution with details, why did this issue happen, and how was it fixed? All right. So now the specialist or the engineer steps in to fix the issue. We also spoke about a couple of other consoles, the metric and history consoles. So the metric reporting will allow you to observe trends across the different areas of your factory floor and optimize accordingly, which is handy for the managers. And now that we spoke about various consoles, it's time we also touched on the topic of AWS AppSync which plays a key role behind these consoles. OK, so AWS AppSync is basically a fully managed service that makes it easy to develop graph QL APIs and supports real-time updates and collaboration across the factory flow personally. With AppSync, you get to enable a rich set of APIs to create sites, issue, and monitor. So the beauty of these APIs is that they allow for custom integration with external systems such as the manufacturing execution systems for automated issue creation and solving. 
By the way, it also has capabilities for offline data sync where internet connectivity is poor on the factory floor. And lastly, it handles the heavy lifting of securely connecting to data sources like Amazon DynamoDB with caches to improve performance. That said, let's connect the, connect the dots here. A perfect customer reference for this architecture is the Amazon Fulfillment Center itself. Yes, we have implemented the same solution in our fulfillment centers and see a downtime reduction by 70%. All right, now what we spoke was just a tip of the iceberg. There are many resources under the same topic. So please look into this URL to explore more manufacturing architectures, customer references, and blogs. That said, thank you so much for listening. I hope you had some key takeaways that made, makes it compelling for you to start using the solution, either for your organization or for your customers. Thanks again.